We're off on the road again. By we, I mean me and you. <laughs> um, I'm off into town to do our fortnightly shop and I've also got a shed load of errands to run today. I've got some bits and pieces to pick up for the garden from Bunnings. I'm dropping the brush cutter off for its first service, which they like to do after five hours of use. Uh, the first service is half price, so that's excellent. And whilst I'm there, I'll be able to pick up a spare battery for the chainsaw. I'm reserving coming to any sort of judgment on the chainsaw until I've got that second battery because I don't think it's fair to judge it uh, on one battery alone. And then I'm also going to get some bits and pieces from a pharmacy, some like stuff to make myself look nice. Um, you might think, why do I bother? But you know. <laughs> um, and where else am I going? Um, yeah, I'm going to collect the shopping. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm going here, there and everywhere. I might take you along, show you some bits and pieces. I'm a bit limited for space since I'll have all the shopping and the brush cutter. So I'm going to do a very minimal bunning shop. But now is the time of year that I'm looking to stock up on manure so that I can make the um, dung donuts to go around the beds in the flower garden. But that can probably wait because it's still not temperatures aren't that hot so it's not that urgent so uh, I can put that off because I don't think I'll have space for everything that I'll be picking up today anyway I better wend on my merry way and I'll pick you up in town I have dropped the brush cutter off I have got some stationary supplies and now I'm at the place where we buy our bird seed that's it there it's a really cool farm supply shop in this barn. Yeah. Here we are in Bunnings, come in the garden centre entrance, which is always risky. Oh, hang on. I've been after a tacky garden ornament for ages. You'd be surprised how poor the collection of garden gnomes in Australia is. Might come back and have a look at this because one of the benefits of Bunnings is they've got a toilet. <laughs> I'm making a beeline for that. This is what we're looking for. Motley bunch of stuff. Fun and excitement of being an adult. Anyway, let's go and check this stuff out and head to the next place. I meant to film in the uh, chemists, which is a bit like Beats or Super Jug if you're in the UK, but um, I got too excited. I uh, actually forgot, so sorry about that. We'll go on a tour of an Australian pharmacy another time. I had to pick up some nice stuff though. You may not know, but I'm obsessed with nail polish, so I did cheat myself to the couple. Anyway, I'm off to do the supermarket shopping now, then I'm off to collect the brush cutter, and I think I'm done, and I can head home. Whilst I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, no beta. I thought I'd show you the result of my nail experiments. So, this one's new, it's from OPI. This one I had, it's ballet slippers. This one's new, this one's new. And this one I already had. It's another Essie colour, which I got as a free gift actually, some time ago. As you can see, I'm going down a more neutral route. I'm just wanting something maybe a bit subtle sometimes. So I'm trying them out on both hands and both feet so I can get a better idea. I do have a bit of a nail varnish habit. My collection lives in here. You can see that. So by no means is it all neutral colours. Actually, let's I run the gamut, although I do tend to lean more towards colours that are on the redder spectrum because I think nails that go beyond that look a bit weird. Anyway, so I'm quite pleased with how that's gone. It's giving me some good ideas. I, I am sort of still basically thinking with the trip to Brisbane, fingers crossed that goes ahead, 
coming up I might want to present myself in a slightly more classy way <laughs> and also because I'm imagining it's going to be very very hot I don't want to look too fussy I have cleaned my face I've got some um, hair mask in ready before I wash my hair tomorrow kettle's boiling I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and I'm going to head upstairs when I say tea what you may not know is that I don't actually drink caffeine I don't like to bang on about stuff like that but if you're interested I have found dandelion and dandelion chai and rooibos to be excellent tea substitutes um, because I find a lot of other non-caffeinated tea substitutes tend to be a bit fruity um, they tend to be a bit sort of childish I think but these are very mature tea substitutes as you might be able to see I am now upstairs where admittedly the lighting is lovely for relaxing but not necessarily brilliant for filming anyway um, you may or may not know that Will has a new interest and that is presenting a program on a local community radio station it's more professional than that made it sound um, and he's been doing it for a month or so now I think this will be his fifth show he's done a couple of different types of shows the show he's doing tonight is a three-hour show that he's presenting on his own playing music of his choice and he's also in the past co-presented a request show um, that this radio station has. I'll have a link to the radio station in the description below and I feel like judging by some of the things that they've said the link should work all over the world although of course um, you won't necessarily know when Will's on the radio because the scheduling is very erratic. Uh, essentially most of the presenters are volunteers, Will's volunteering to do this um, and so it, it is a little chaotic but in like a really nice way, it's a really nice station. Um, the adverts aren't overly intrusive especially when you get to the evening when they don't need to play them quite so frequently. Um, Will plays some really interesting music and it's it's really cool to hear him online, um, to hear him on the radio. Anyway, so when Will's doing this, I've taken to coming upstairs, making myself a cup of tea, getting all cosy, um, getting him set up on my computer and listening to Will present his show whilst I occupy myself conducting one of my favourite hobbies, which is going onto websites like Vestiaire Collective and fantasy shopping, um, expensive luxury clothing and accessories that I'm never going to buy but that I just like looking at for fun. Uh, anyway, so I'm about to start doing this. I just thought I'd mention about Will's DJing in case you didn't know and you were interested to check it out. He's mostly going to be presenting on a Thursday uh, evening slot our time. Um, but not weekly, so more towards the end of each month, I think, although that may be liable to change. I was uh, driving home quite late at night and I have encountered a dead possum who had a little baby in her pouch. This is the baby. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with him, I know a number of carers, but it's currently 20 past 11 at night. So I'll have to decide the best option. Poor little thing. Didn't want to leave his mother's pouch, but she isn't alive anymore. So hopefully we'll be able to get him to a carer. An update on the possum situation. Here is the little possum who we're taking to a carer very soon. He's a, a bit shy, which is understandable, but he has had a bit of uh, water with honey in it to drink to get his fluids up. 
and he'll be going to an animal carer who's very experienced in looking after baby possums. He's certainly alive, which is good. And we now have him in a little home, which is a white bucket with holes in the bottom, some eucalyptus leaves, a nice little pouch, and in there is also some water and some fruit, watermelon, apple, and banana. So a nice fruit salad for Mr. Possum. Anyway, we're going to put a lid on Mr. Possum. And in about an hour or so, I'll drive him down to animal carers who will hopefully raise him to be well and healthy. You find me back up the hill again. It's wood processing day to day. Suboptimal, it's quite windy and that's actually really quite unpleasantly hot, even though it's really early in the morning. But today is the day that I am able to try the chainsaw for the first time with two batteries and two charges. So I think, as I mentioned, I've been kind of holding off coming to any sort of conclusions until I was set up in the way that I think I'm going to be set up going forward. I didn't think it was fair because I wasn't able to work in the way that I would choose to work. Now that I have the two batteries, I'm going to go and see how much wood I can manage to process in the morning and, uh, and then I'll report back to you to see what I think more firmly about the new Husqvarna 340i chainsaw now that I can use it properly. The wind's so terrible it's not possible to um, record unless I'm in some sort of shelter and even then I'm not too sure how well you'll be able to hear me. Anyway, my wood processing is done so I thought I'd quickly update you on how it went and what I thought about how it went. The chainsaw is currently set up to be sharpened, that's the last thing that I'll do. But essentially I went through one and a half batteries. I generated 84 pieces of wood, um, some of which were quite big and needed splitting. Um, and I also processed 10 pieces of second kindling. So I managed to do all of that, including some quite big pieces on one and a half batteries. Uh, I only had to tension the chain once, the chain is fine. I didn't need to top up the um, oil, which is there. Uh, it didn't go through the whole thing. I didn't use it in eco mode. So all in all, actually, that was an excellent morning's work. I wasn't sure what to make of the Husqvarna 340i battery chainsaw when I first picked it up. But as Will said, um, <laughs> I'm not the world's greatest person at adapting to change and I, I had been using the Ryobi battery chainsaw for two years, although they will be two different ones. And I was just used to it and I was finding things about the Husqvarna a bit frustrating. When I was first processing the firewood, I was finding that the chain would get stuck, jammed in the wood and, and freeze quite frequently and I was also finding that I was having to tension the chain quite frequently but I've managed to solve that I think by just keeping a bit more on top of the amount of chain and bar oil which is in it so making sure that that's pretty topped up and then I had no problems with it jamming today and as I said I only had to t uh, tighten the chain once um, that, I think that also helped with the longevity of the batteries too. So previously I wouldn't have been able to have accomplished all of that on one and a half batteries. So I think it was just a case of adapting to it. And now that I have, I love it. It's an absolutely amazing tool. Obviously I'll need to give it the full year to be able to make a fair comparison with the Ryobi. But um, I, I think it, so far, I'm really enjoying it. I can do everything that I need to do with it. It can do everything that the Ryobi could do. And I hope that time will tell that it will be able to do it better. So if you're wanting a battery powered chainsaw for relatively light use, but not, you know, like totally messing about, just pruning the old branch here or there, this can do some serious work. I highly recommend it.